Hello, hello and welcome to uh, turn six of uh, the uh, Wing Leader Eagles uh, 4345 uh, Schlachtflieger uh, scenario um, game by GMT and Lee Brimacone Wood. Um, uh, I guess you could probably designate this turn as the bombing turn. However, um, as true to most of my replays on this, I always forget to do something at the end of the previous turn and uh, that actually was here in this square where we had uh, opposing fighters uh, still uh, not broken uh, on both sides so therefore we need to resolve whether there's a dogfight there um, so we've got the um, BF1 and IG and the Yak-9 here in the cloud and uh, whether there's a dogfight uh, again if both sides agree then it happens if both sides agree that it doesn't happen it doesn't happen but if they uh, <coughs> agree to, uh, one of them agree uh, agrees one disagrees then there's a roll-off I think in this case the BF109 would probably want to keep the Yak-9 away from the bombers so the 109G was probably would want a, um, a dogfight and the Yak-9 wouldn't so it will be a competitive dice roll so the basic speed value of the Y09 at this level is a six um, plus one for the speed uh, dive, uh, uh, plus one speed for uh, the dive, uh, going to a seven. Uh, the Yak9, uh, the Yak9 at this level is, uh, speed is five. Um, so seven to five. So there's a plus two on the German dice. Uh, actually, there's a plus three because the 109G is a veteran as well. Um, so plus three. This is the German dice roll. So yeah, it doesn't really matter what the uh, Russian one is. There is actually a dogfight there. Uh, so glad we cleared that up. Let's place the marker and we can get on with turn six. Okay. Um, so, uh, tally phase isn't anything particularly to tally, although I will mention that um, the 190, uh, Focke Wolf 190s here, the Fs, coming in with the uh, um, anti-ground uh, anti-tank rockets, um, so uh, they are fighter bombers, so they have a particular designation, uh, they're fighters who are doing bombing at the moment. Now they have the option of tallying if they want to. However, if they do tally a fighter squadron, they will drop their bomb load and become fighters. We don't really want them to do that and you have the option of not having to tally, So they're, even if they're actually in combat. So uh, we'll keep them out of uh, the tallying business. Uh, other than that, uh, everybody's got a tally where, um, uh, and let's just check over to see if any of them need to change. Okay, so mostly the same. Um, the only ones that will change, though, uh, this Russian here, um, Q. So Q is uh, currently tallying um, N, which is this fighter up here. Uh, it's a mutual tally, I think it was from last turn. I think we'll drop that, and we'll probably want to pick up on the HS129 here, X. Uh, so that's a 1 uh, Q... Looking at the, uh, where are we? Q is actually over here. Um, has been tallied by N, but it's going to drop N's tally and attempt to um, uh, tally X here. Um, so uh, that's a one. And uh, I think uh, that's pretty much it, actually. So anything but a one. Uh, so a six. Uh, which is what we rolled, that's fine, so X has a huge tally on it. Uh, the other one here, N, has tallied P, which is in this dogfight now. Now, um, I think it's probably more worth, if we can, to go after the bombers, and the JU-87s are quite close. Um, alternatively, you could try and engage this fighter, um, which may interfere in some of the operations here um, or even here so um, but I'm not sure it's worth 
continue with the tally here. So uh, we'll, I think maybe we will follow this fighter because these 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 squadrons here have got the stukas covered, if you like. And maybe if this actually tallies one of these, um, this can tally that. So we'll try that. One, two, three, four. He's veteran, um, so it's uh, minus one. So uh, it's fifty-fifty. And a five is good enough. So he switches his tally, um, which is up here, from oops, from P, from P to N, uh, up here. Okay. So that's our, our tallies, I believe. Um, so now we're on to movement, and of course it's bombers first. So uh, we're down here, and we've got some bombing profiles to do this turn. Uh, so the first I want to do is uh, V here. So V will drop, I think, one, two. Um, and we'll have plus one speed there. Uh, and we'll strafe. And this one will likewise strafe. Now V, uh, V has, has no fighter following it because... Uh, this fighter here broke. Um, however, Q is following X, so therefore can can follow um, the strafe here. So the attacks actually happen um, with strafing uh, immediately. Uh, so with this HS129, um, <coughs> we do get a uh, a flak response here. There is a flak here, S0, which is small arms, uh, 0 here. So the flak defence, uh, we will roll. And um, it's uh, the small arms just mean it's, it's in the space only. Uh, so it's a 0 uh, on the flak table, but this is doing a bombing profile, of course. Um, so uh, we would have... Um, a zero with the target altitude six or less, so plus one. There is no weather modifier, um, plus one because of the bomb aiming, so plus two, and uh, that's it. So plus two on the dice for the tank anti aircraft fire. A three, oh, it's two dice, sorry. So three and one, four is nothing. Uh, so therefore we bomb uh, successfully here, uh, strafe as it is. Um, so uh, we use the firepower value of the HS129. However, because we've got an 80 gun, we have an 80 gun of four as one of its um, attributes. So we use that instead of its firepower. So we use a four firepower onto the tanks and uh, as a result of this we would put a low ammo marker on the uh, uh, on the bomber because it's actually strafing um, so uh, right um, so dice modifiers uh, the uh, bomb site is a T which at altitude zero is a zero modifier. Um, and there's no defense modifier, I don't believe, nope. Uh, so we are doing a strafing, which is a plus three on the dice. And uh, it has been attacked uh, by flak this turn. And it's not a veteran, so we just have the plus three here. Uh, so plus three on the dice. Uh, and two dice to roll for the bombing. Or well, the strafing, if you see Oh, wow, look at that. 12. Uh, that's a hell of a hit. So 12 plus 3 is 15. Well, 12 or more is 100% of hits. So that is... Um, bomb strength is 4, of course, with the anti-tank. Um, and percentage of hits. So, yeah, it's it's 4 hits. Uh, 4 hits onto... Uh, 
that uh, tank unit uh, very effective. So we'll just place that under here. And if we do the next strafing here, uh, so flak again, uh, dice plus two on the bombing profile table, a 10, uh, so that's 12, 12 is very good. 12 is a minus one bombing modifier. Okay, so on the bombing table, uh, we had plus three for the strafing and uh, that was about it, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, except now it's a minus one for the bombing modifier from the flag. So that's only a plus two. So we roll a plus two on the bombing table for the second attack. Oh, <laughs> wow, look at that. 12 with one hit, two with the other hit. So two plus two is four. Four is zero hits. So absolutely nothing to the other tank. Uh, wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sublime to the ridiculous. Um, okay, so now uh, that that's done, the next one to move is Q, um, because uh, he is um, tallied onto X. So uh, he will flip over here for one, uh, two, and then dive straight down three, four. So he should be able to get a, um, a bounce onto that henshaw there. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, other bombers to go. So we've got our stukas, but I'll just shuffle across if I can fit them in with these wing displays. I'll get these wing displays moved for a second uh, of the henshaws. And the FW190s will come in as well okay so they're getting close now uh right um uh, also no uh, an anti-tank uh, guided rocket uh, attack is um different to a strafe so it's kind of like a proper bombing run anyway those bombers done uh then the next bombers are the jgo 87s here now these guys are ready to drop on the troops so uh, we can do a bombing profile of a dive bomb. Now that means that effectively you dive straight down onto the target and uh, release. Right, so with this JU-87 uh, we go uh, uh, one to there and then one and a half, sorry, one and a half, two, and it's got an extra movement point uh, so it's uh, two and a half, three, because it's diving. I've got a dive markers here this turn uh, on everything. Uh, and then it will drop its bomb load from altitude one. Uh, where are we? We are U. So use bomb load marker here. Um, gets dropped on the target. Um, <clears throat> uh, then U has been, uh, we resolve the combat in the combat phase, um, so, uh, so U has been tallied by P, if I just flip this up a little, by P, P here is the P39, so, uh, we should drop down as well, I suppose, uh, although we will be attacked by the barrage, um, I think uh, it's probably the thing to do. Yeah, one, two, three, sorry, one, one and a half, two, two and a half. Um, this GU87 though isn't close enough, it needs to be adjacent to the troop, so he will actually move, keep moving here. And of course, this Yak 3, A, which has it tallied, will of course move with it. Um, so, uh, that's all the bombers done. So now it's the remaining fighters. So, uh, down here we have the dogfight. So, uh, and actually, I should have done a dogfight first, 
of course the dogfight is the first movement before the bombers um, and uh, we need to roll to see uh, who gets to move if at all uh, the dogfight Okay, it's so uh, straight 50-50, um, one, two, three, and the Raider, which would be the Germans move the stack if they want to, four to six, it's the Soviets, the Soviets get to move it if they want to, uh, we could remove this dive, and uh, do the Soviets want to move it? Uh, possibly, um, the Yak-9 has, uh, yeah, much better... Uh, much better stats uh, at altitude 3 uh, it is at altitude 3 so it's quite happy um, maybe I'm just wondering if it would uh, want to move out of the cloud uh, that's possible um, uh, where did I put the cloud marker uh, oh, seem to have moved it off somewhere um, yeah uh, the other thing I suppose is it, it kind of slows down the combat, doesn't it? So uh, maybe it'll stick there. I think, oh, the, the, the cloud marker is underneath. So uh, yeah, we'll just keep keep it there, I think, and won't move it. Uh, right, sort of dogfight done. Uh, so the next is the Lavoshkin here and the 109G. So the 109G should move first. Um, it has actually tallied, um, oh, I should have actually moved a little while ago, uh, where are we, uh, it's Q, it's been tallied, which is down here, so N should actually um, drop down one, uh, one and a half, two, two and a half here, with yet another dive counter, i run out in a minute, um, and of course N has spotted N there, so one, two, oops, one, two, three, four with the dive. Coming in to uh, pitch in there. Um, who else have we got to deal with? I don't believe we have anybody else to deal with. Yeah, that, that's all movement. So uh, we can set up the combats uh, now. Um, but uh, I think the first thing to do is to sort out the uh, bomb attack here and some barrage here. Yeah, we should do the barrage uh, attacks uh, during, the move, uh, during the movement phase. So let's do that. Um, so the barrage attack for the uh, Stuka here. Um, flex units strength is uh, zero of course um, and uh, that's it really it's just a straight roll uh, it's on a bombing profile so we roll on the bombing table and the roll is an eight uh, an eight is uh, yeah, no effect um, we need to roll it for the p39 as well so again it's a straight roll but this is a flak attack because it's not actually bombing. A five is no effect. So the barrage is taken care of. Um, the small arms, uh, this is actually in, in altitude one. So the small arms don't fire. And uh, yeah, now we can do the, now we can do the uh, bombing attacks. Uh, cause there are no, in the combat phase, cause there's no direct fire flak attacks at all. Um, resolving the bombing attacks, uh, our bomb load here. So our Stuka, if we get the card here, um, here we go. So it's a bombing value of 24. Wow, okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, let's, uh, what else do we need to do here? We've got dive bombing here. Um, we've got an altitude modifier and its bomb site is T. Um, so let's just leave that in view for a moment. Uh, bomb site is T, and a T at altitude one is a minus one to the dice. 
um, and the dive bombing is a plus three so it's a plus two at the moment um, the bomber was attacked by flak and I believe uh, that's about it unless P is uh, this is you no he's not not veteran or anything so a plus two onto the dice as far as I can see yeah so let's roll the dice for the sluker with a plus two that's a five six seven seven is a ten percent so that's 2.4 um, so that's two hits only so we can apply two hits just off camera here um, there and remove the bomb load marker right that's the uh, bombing done so now we need to resolve the air combat so we have our dogfight happening here of course let's remove our sticker air data card out of the way um, so we have uh, one here of course we have one here uh, we have one here and we have one here so that's four uh, four combats uh, to sort out uh, so we'll shift over to the battle display and get those sorted right our first combat here um, is the dogfight um, and the BF1 and RNG flight and the Yak-9 so uh, it's in cloud and uh, it has to be a turning fight when it's a dogfight so this is where the Yak-9 actually has the advantage um, if we look at the um, their data cards here the turning for level 3 is a 7 for the Yak-9 only a 6 for the 109 and uh, so the advantage is actually with the, the, the Yak-9 and that means that it is actually the attacker um, however then we put the modifiers in um, for the combat and uh, of course we have a 7 here but we are disrupted and green which drops 2 so that's down to a 5 uh, the 109G um, it's a flight so it's a 6 uh, flight takes it down to 5 but veteran takes it back up to 6 um, because the Yak-9 has the better um, the better characteristics uh, it can do evading or equal to or better characteristics it can do evading which it will do so that's a minus one on both sides as a modifier on the die so we're both on minus one um, the veteran cancels that out for the um, for the 109 however we're in cloud which has a uh, two modifier so we end up with minus two on the dice for the 109g and minus three for the ac9 um, so yeah let's uh, let's do the rolls on that let's zoom out and if we do uh, the attack on the yak 9 so that's um, on the plus one table with minus two so that's an eight going to a six on plus one table is it's actually just a hit so there is a hit there um, let's uh, roll in reverse so it's the minus one table minus three on the dice for the yak back we have an eight again minus three is a five and of course that's no result so the one loss for the yak nine and the yak nine has uh, a protection of four and the 109 has a firepower of one uh, plus it's an expert it has an expert so therefore it's two so plus two on the dice against a protection of four we get a two, two plus two is four, exactly the same as a protection rating, so we get a straggler. And we place that there. Uh, then we do our um, cohesion checks. So for the Russian, uh, for the Soviet, it had a loss, was the attacking side in the combat, um, which helps as well, so that uh, cancels each other out. Uh, is green, so that's another minus one. Uh, and has a low marker, so an ammo low marker here, is here so uh, another minus one. Uh, so that means a minus two on the dice uh, and a weather modifier actually um, 
is, a, is another thing. So uh, minus four on the dice, so I think uh, we're going to get a broken squadron here. Minus four. Whoa. <laughs> so we get an eight. Uh, no effect. Well, that was uh, quite lucky for the Yak-9. Now for the uh, the 109, um, it has no loss. Of it is veteran, so a plus one on the dice. Uh, however, it has a depleted ammo marker, so minus two. Uh, and minus two for the weather modifier, so it's minus three on the dice. Oh, and that's much worse. Minus three gets us a two. For a fighter, that is two disruptions, but it's a flight anyway, so it is broken. Wow, that's a bit of a turnaround um, in fortunes. So a broken, and that's the last 109 with uh, an expert as well. So that's all the expert 109 flights uh, broken now and uh, or, or escaped. Uh, right, so there's that flight done. I'll set up for the next one. Okay, uh, next we have uh, the uh, Yak-9, um, which uh, has, uh, is attacking the Henshaw 129, which has just attacked the tanks, and um, the BF-109G, a remaining flight, has attacked it. So, um, because there's a bomber on the German side, the, the Germans are the defender, the Russians are the attacker, um, the attacker is choosing uh, turning, um, again, because they have the uh, advantage, and they have a turn value of seven. Uh, diving doesn't matter, and um, there's no real modifiers for uh, the Act 9. For the 109G, we have um, a turn rating of six as before, um, and that's minus one for the flight, but plus one for the veteran, so it's on a six. Bomber doesn't count for, doesn't have any defence factor and doesn't count as an extra squadron because it's a bomber. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's all. Well. So it's uh, plus one, minus one uh, to the Russians with no modifiers. There's no experts here. Uh, there's no weather modifiers or anything like that. So, um, and no bouncing because there's a, a bomber. In, it's a multi, multi-combat. Uh, so, uh, right, if you zoom out, we'll just do the dice rolls. So, um, the Russians are on a plus one table. And we get a nine. Uh, a nine on plus one is two hits. Uh, coming back from the 109, it's on the minus one table. It's also a nine. Uh, on a minus one table is one hit. So two hits on the uh, on the Germans and a one on the Soviets. Uh, I think the Yak-9 would want to damage the 129 actually, um, although it's a much tougher craft. Uh, as you might be able to see here, it's got a five, six protection and the Yak-9 only has a one firepower. So it's, it's not actually likely to get a loss. So, uh, maybe it should focus on the 109G, I'm thinking. Um, should really go for the bombers, but they're really tough little aircraft to actually damage. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll go for the 109, I think. More likely to get some, some losses, surprisingly. Uh, okay, so two losses on the 109. Um, got a protection of four. We got a firepower of one. Uh, so plus one on the dice. Uh, two rolls. So one and a three plus one on the dice becomes a two and a four. So that wouldn't have scored anything on the one, two, nine if we'd done it. Um, as it is, that's only one straggler uh, because the three goes to a four. Um, so just one straggler not uh, a big deal to be honest um, and that goes up here and the one loss on on the yak nine uh, so we have uh, the reverse really um, the veteran doesn't count it's only expert that counts so it's plus one against a protection of four uh, we get a five here so yeah that is a loss on the yak nine right Okay, and then cohesion checks. 
So for uh, the Gustav of the uh, Y9G um, here, uh, we are veteran, uh, but we have low ammo, which I'll flip over and stop me forgetting. Uh, veteran, uh, low ammo cancels each other out. We're not the attacking side. And I think that would be it. Um, yeah, so it's just a straight roll for the uh, the 109. Oh, that's a terrible roll. Four. Four is a uh, disrupt. And of course, because it is a flight, it is broken. So that's all the fighter suite broken now uh, on the German side. Um, that's not good news. Um, that's a big, big thing for the uh, for the Soviets there. Uh, for the Yak-9, um, we've taken a loss, but we were attacking. So we'll put a low ammo marker on. So those two cancel out. So I think it's a straight, yeah, it's a straight roll. Let's see what comes up here. Uh, better roll, this is a nine. Uh, a nine is no effect. So, uh, yeah, lives to uh, to fight on. And finally, the Henschel here. So, um, no losses. It's not veteran. Wasn't on the attacking side and doesn't have the ammo market because it's a bomber. Uh, so, uh, therefore, um, actually, I'm just thinking, should it have that ammo marker? Because it was attacking the tanks. So, yes. Um, actually, that's, yeah, that's actually incorrect. Um, so... Uh, yes, it should have a low ammo marker. I forgot that. Um, so minus one on the dice then. But it's uh, bombing, so it should be okay. Six going to a five is none, so it, it's fine. Um, okay, so that's that combat done. Let me set up for the final combat. Well, when I said uh, final combat, that's actually two combat. So um, it's the two Stukas here uh, in different squares. Uh, so uh, this Stuka is just at the point of its bombing run uh, and the Yak-3 is attacking it. Um, we're at altitude five, so um, we are going to be using of course speed because um, you don't want that defense rating to go up by two um, so on speed we have a six here um, minus one because of the disruption so five ju87 there is a three uh, but minus one because of the bomb load so five to two uh, there are no other modifiers on the dice rolls so it's a plus three minus three so the plus three four the attack by the Yak-3 is pretty poor, um, that's a 5, so um, uh, on the plus 3 table a 5 is still just a loss, so wow, just, just made it. Uh, and uh, for the Stuka back, this is on the minus 3 table, no modifier, a 7. Um, so the minus three table is no loss. So one loss on the Stuka. Uh, Stuka's protection of four. Firepower of two from the Yak-3. Um, so plus two on the dice. And uh, one dice roll. Oh, six, seven, eight. So that is definitely a loss. So it's a second loss on that Stuka squadron. Right, and cohesion. So um, for the Yak-3, we have, uh, it was attacking, so plus one. It has a loss and it is, um, it has a loss and it is ammo depleted. So that's minus three for those, plus one for the attacking side. So uh, yeah, just minus 
two on the dice. It is already disrupted, so and you need one level to break. Eight, I don't think that'll be good enough. Eight minus two is six, so yes, it does break. It's had enough. So, uh, and the Stuka itself, so two losses here. Um, and that's pretty much it, so a minus two on the dice. A seven going to a five, a five is no effect. So co uh, cohesion is still there. Right, um, so just zipping across to uh, this combat here, uh, which is at the bottom of uh, the first Stuka Squadron's um, bombing run here, so right on the, right on the deck. Um, so the J7 followed by the P39, which has dropped straight down with it, and that is an attack out of the sun, so it does bounce. Um, at level zero, we have a speed of six from the P39. And uh, we also have the dive to make it seven. And we also have, have the veteran status to make it eight. Um, the J87 has a speed of four. If we look back here, uh, speed of three uh, plus one because of the dive makes it a four. No longer got the bomb load, so it doesn't get that minus one. So eight to four is a plus four minus four uh the double modifiers for the p39 is plus two um plus one for the bounce and plus one for the expert um here so plus two here ju87 minus one for the bounce so plus four plus two and minus four minus one are the, are the two rolls so the p39 rolls so on the plus four table with plus two on the dice. Oh gosh, wow, he's really hammered in there. Um, quite a few 12s have come up actually. So 12, 14, so that's the maximum table. That's actually as far as the table comes out. So if you see here, I've got 14 or more and plus four, so six losses. Whoa, okay. So on the minus four table, minus one in reply. Wow, amazing. Uh, got two 12s in a row. So 12 going to 11. Uh, that actually has one loss. It might have been two without the minus one, but uh, without the bounce. So one loss on the P39. So let's roll on the P39. Firepower of zero from the Stuka. And the defense of the P39 is five. So... Uh, Five power of zero, it's just a two, so that's no loss. Now the six losses for the Stuka Squadron. So protection of four, five power of two, and it's an expert, so that's plus three on the dice. So it's likely to be losses, almost all of them. So first two, those two are losses with plus three on the dice. Uh, next two, Again, four and four are losses, two sevens, and five and six, they're not even small rolls. So all six losses on that Stuka squadron. Wow. So just placing those massive losses there. Uh, I suppose when you've got a uh, aircraft that's fragile as a JU-87 with a P-39 with an expert, uh, with the cannons, um, you're going to get this kind of result. So, but uh, oops, one, two, three, four, five, six. Gosh, and it's not like it did a very good bombing run anyway, uh, causing only two hits from its bomb on the troops. So, right, anyway. I'll uh, put these uh, these counters back on the uh, the map, and uh, we'll assess for the uh, admin phase. Actually, before I do that, we've got cohesion checks to do, haven't we? Uh, right. So, um, and we don't have any dogfights this turn uh, because uh, one side or other is broken, or there's bombers involved. Um, uh, so, yeah, cohesion checks. 
P39 we have uh, ammo low, so it's a minus one, plus one for veteran, plus one for attacking, so we have a plus one on the dice. Five's not good though, a six I think might be a disrupt. I think it may well be one. Um, a six is a disrupt, so he is disrupted. So I'm not we're downing so many Stukas, I'm not I'm not surprised to be honest. <laughs> um and now for the Stuka. Well, well, um it's uh, six losses, so it's minus six on the dice. Um so, uh, <laughs> a terrible roll. So as it's a bomber though, it only suffers one level of disruption maximum, so it is disrupted. And, well, it's not a surprise that actually ended up as a minus four as a roll. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, those cohesion rolls done. And, yeah, we can, uh, we can put the uh, units back on the main board. Okay, here we are, back with the main board. So, not been a good turn for the Germans, I think. Um, we've had our two BF-109 flights, the final two in the sweep break. So the bombers are kind of on their own. Um, the Henschels die okay. Um, there's four hits here. And, uh, yeah, uh, it's... Um, we had a miss, of course. Uh... Stukas, however, um, mixed bag. Um, this Stuka dive bomber here uh, did fairly poorly against the troops here um, and was absolutely decimated by um, the P-39 squadron diving on it. Um, this Ju-87 um, has pretty much survived what's been going on uh, with the uh, tussle with the Yak-3 here. It's got a couple of hot losses now, but... Um, it did break the uh, the Yak-3, so it's had enough and going home, so uh, not so bad there, and we'll have to see what how it does on the bombing next turn. Um, but um, I think the the Germans will have to turn their attention to the F1 W190s, Pocket World 190s coming in here with their, um, uh, their rockets, and um, they've got a little bit of a reception here, as we have the Yak-9 here. Um, which may still harry the 129s, but we have the Yak-9 up here, which has got rid of the 109. It was dogfighting, and we have the latecomer, the Lavoshkin flight, uh, veteran flight coming in here, which is uh, very well set to either pounce on the Henschels or possibly in the FW-190Fs. So, yeah, um, yeah, I say not, not a good turn for the Germans there, but let's see how, how it goes with the rest of the uh, the scenario and uh, we will be on to turn seven next video so uh, once again as usual um, thanks uh, for watching and uh, see you for turn seven